Hey, what is up, YouTube? This is Brian Nerd225, and today if I take you through my Dark Magician deck profile, finally happy that the Legendary Dragon decks came with the cards that were so expensive, like Dark Magical Circle was fifty dollars, Magician's Navigation was fifty dollars, and Apprentice Illusion Magician was like a hundred and twenty dollars, which I thought was bullshit. But no, the deck is very affordable, and it came with the new fusion, Dark Magician, the Dragon Knight. I mean, like, look at this. Isn't this a beautiful card? Of course it is, but I do not think it's beautiful with a 3k body, and I'll explain its effects later on. So, without further ado, I'll take you through the tech profile. First up, the main, the namesake of the deck, and boss monster, Triple Dark Magician. This deck is about summoning him, resummoning him, resummoning him over and over and over. With Eternal Soul, which was the cheap one of the cheaper cards of the deck. And yeah, I mean, like I included a Gold Rare Limited Edition, uh, Dark Side Dimensions movie art, regular movie art, and of course, Limited Edition from the 2017 Megaton, not 2017, 2016 Megaton. And it's also the original artwork, and I had to include original because I thought the original was best, but I also like the Dark Side Dimensions art, so I decided to include two of those. Next up, the Bay, one of the main dope cards, besides Dark Magician, Apprentice Illusion Magician. Which I think is, I mean, like, look at her, she's so beautiful, so dope. I love this card, mainly because she's like an honest for dark spellcasters, because you can discard her from your hand during the battle phase when dark spellcaster type monster declares an attack, or if she's on the field, you can still use her effect, so it's basically like a Kalut the Moon Shadow and honest from hand or field, so she's basically both, because you can use her effect. And when you can discard her, not discard her, discard a card, Special summon her, then you can add a dark spellcaster from your deck to your hand. Not dark spellcaster from your deck to your hand, duh. Sorry. What you can do is that you discard a card, special summon her, then you can add dark magician from your deck to your hand. I don't know why I said dark spellcaster, I'm sorry. Uh, words came into my mouth. Uh, when I keep on thinking about dark spellcaster, when I mentioned the uh, first effect. Next up, Triple Magician's Rod. This is the card you always want to open up with most of the time because this is your Strauso deck searching for Dark Magician spell or trap cards. Only that specifically lists Dark Magician in its text, so you can search your Eye of Tamizes, which is what you need to summon Dark Magician the Dragon Knight. But I don't know why, that's kind of stupid. But you can search for Illusion Magic, Dark Magic Attack, Dark Magic Inheritance. You can also search for Eternal Soul and also Dark Magical Circle, which I will get to in a bit. So you always want to open up with this card. Next up, uh, Double Magician and Dark Illusion. And in an old build, it might have been worth running to. I'm three, sorry, you might have been worth running three, but now I cut it down to two. Because, you know, you got Practice Illusion Magician now, but still, it's a good card to have in your deck. Because when you activate a spell or trap, except during the damage stack, you special summon this card from your hand. When you do that, same becomes Heart Magician, that means you can use the effect of Circle. And also, a second effect, when you dis when you activate a spell or a trap card, except during the damage stack, you special summon Dark Magician from your grace, that means you can, uh... Star Magic Circle will become live, or you can just save it and wait for Eternal Soul. Next up, last card in the deck, one hand trap, one maxi. Now I do play Dark Magician on a budget, but some of the cards uh, I have, I paid a couple dollars for, so I mean like Dark Magician still on budget. But, you know, um, the Magician of Dark Illusion, I pulled out the 2017 Megaton, so I was lucky to get two. And I was saving those and waiting for Legendary Dragon decks. Next up, the first three spells, which are Dark Magical Circle. This card is your one of the best spells in the deck, because as soon as you activate it, you search for the top three cards of your deck to add Dark Magician to your hand, or a Dark Magician card that specifically lists Dark Magician in its text, like Eternal Soul, Illusion Magic, Dark Magic Attack, Dark Magic Inheritance, 
or Magician's Navigation, or Eternal Soul. Those are the only cards you can add, not Eye of Tamias, but if you do end up excavating Eye of Tamias, you could still add that one specific Dark Magician card you uh, found on the t top three, then you could stack it and add put Eye of Tamias on the top so you could draw on your next turn. That's the second effect of Circle. Its other effect is when you Special Summon Dark Magician at all, by any means, you can um, banish... A card on your opponent's field, but if you have two, it doesn't stack. Like, you can't use the effect of both circle. If you special summon one, you got special summon two. But that's okay. Because I'm able, most of the time, I'm able to get out two Dark Magician, basically. If I go second, I can bring out Dark Magician turn one if I'm lucky. Next up, draw power card. First draw power, triple or darkness. I do not like Pod Desires. I mean, like, I tried running it. But, you know, I really don't want to risk losing Dark Magician or my Apprentice or any of those. Even though I'm running a low monster count, I still don't want to risk it. I prefer to do the classic draw of Lord Darkness, draw 2, banish Dark. And you run so many Darks in this deck, so really, you run a good amount of Darks, even though the monster count is low. And you run so many multiples. If you want to banish one Dark Magician, at least that's fine. But if you banish two, you got to be extremely careful. Because that one Dark Magician can, gets destroyed, you're basically going to lose the game. The next draw power card, uh, two Pot of Duality. I mean, like, people are running Pod Desires because they don't like the drawback of Pod Duality. But I prefer that because I can still excavate the top three because its effect is like their magical circle. But the downside with this is that you have to reveal them. With circle, you don't. And the other drawback is they can't special summon monsters. That's fine because my hand is still good. If I could bring a Dark Magician on my opponent's turn, I would still use Save My Apprentice Illusion Magician for the hand trap effect. So I'd rather hold back on that if I'm able to have Dark Magician in my hand. Next up, Double Eye of Tamias. Uh, this card is the uh, best, is the fusion card you use to bring out Dark Magician to Dragon Knight. Or, where is it? Or this other fusion I have, which is uh, Dark Paladin. I'll get to him later when I show you my the rest of my extra deck. Yeah, so eventually when I get back to my house in Maryland, I plan to add a third one and change up my deck a little bit. I might make a 41 card deck, which is fine. I don't mind having 41 cards. At least 41, I don't care. Next up for the one ofs, one Dark Magic Inheritance where you banish two spells and a Dark Magician where you spiral trap in your deck to hands like any card like Circle, uh, Eternal Soul, Navigation, Magic Attack. Or illusion magic. Next up, the one dark magic attack, which clears all spells or traps on the field. People are citing it now, but I prefer to still run it because you know I still see a lot of back row when I go to my locals, like a clean paleo and um and other cards that utilize back row, like, you know, I see ABCs with back row a lot. Most ABC decks I see in Spiral. I mean, like, since that Sleeper is technically a spell card, I, this is why I have Dark Magic Attack, mainly also because of that. Because, you know, when I destroyed the Sleeper, my opponent's board got completely nuked, which made me so happy and allowed me to push in for game. Next up, the one of, the one Illusion Magic, where you tribute a Spellcaster. And then you add two uh, Dark Magician from your deck or grave to your hand. But mainly, I always add it from the deck, not the grave. Last spell card of the deck, the one Dark Magic Veil, which is like, I like to call my spicy tech card. Um, eventually, I plan to get more and then update my deck profile, which I'll show eventually when I get uh, one more Dark Magic Veil. I'll plan to just get one more. Because, you know, you pay 1,000 life points, special summon one Dark Spellcaster from your... Uh, hand or graveyard, which is so good, so good, because if I have this in my hand along with Dark Magician and Circle, if I go second, I can banish a card and push in, like I'll banish the monster. And next up for the traps. 
uh, triple magician's navigation. This is the card you always want to try to have in your hand, turn one or circle. But if you play circle and have excavating and navigation out to your hand, then you summon rod, play illusion magic, got the two dark magicians, then set this, and then on your opponent's turn, activate navigation, summon dark magician with special summon apprentice, then you can add the last dark magician or summon magician of dark illusion. And that's the two effects I just explained. Navigation lets you summon Dark Magician as soon as you activate it from your hand. And you can summon another level zone lower Dark Spellcaster from your deck. Next up, Triple Eternal Soul. This is the main uh, Heart and Soul to deck is what people keep on saying. And I like to agree because, hey, look, it's Dark Magician on the Egyptian Stone. So, of course, it would be the Heart and Soul to deck. Its effects are that... Uh, every dark magician on my on your field is affected by your opponent's card effects, so they would be safe from like quaking or mirror force or any those card effects. Sorry, the phone shaking. I'm using my phone to film it. And if this card leaves the field, all the monsters on your field are destroyed, which is very very bad. But I have a card in my extra deck that can't be destroyed by card effects, which I'll show you in a bit. And it's two effects. One, you get to special summon Dark Magician from your hand or grave, or add Dark Magic Attack or Thousand Knives from your deck to your hand. I have no Thousand Knives, I only have Dark Magic Attack, but mainly I use the uh, other effects to summon Dark Magician from my hand or grave. That's it. Next up, uh, I don't run Dark Hole, but I do run a set of Board Wipe, for say. Uh, double mirror force and the one radiant mirror force because you know when I went to my locals last time I went up against a lot even though spirals were fragile the, the spiral decks I went up against they were so swarming with so many monsters but then I activated one of the best traps I have in my deck to keep them from using their effects, but still when they try to attack. This is why I like using Radiant Mirror Force, because when it has three or more, destroys all attack position monsters. Mirror Force only destroys all attack position monsters from field, so basically, they're really good board white cards. I like playing some classics, because you know I'm on a budget, but I also like playing old school. But old school, you know, because Yugi loves Mirror Force. Next up, Double Dimensional Barrier. I run one... The last dimensional barrier in my side deck, but I prefer to run two because you know I still go up against a lot of fusion synchro, and a lot of because you know Wind Wedge invoked and Trickstar invoked, going to Crystal Wing. It's not Trickstar invoked. Um, why did I say Trickstar invoked? Sorry, uh, Trickstar Wind Witch is what I meant to say. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry about that. I meant to say Trickstar Wind Witch is what they use going to Crystal Wing and Wind Witch invoked. Next up, Double Psalm Strike to prevent special summoning and monster effects. I may add a third. I might add a third to take out the Radiant. It just depends if I'm able to get a third one. And the last trap of the deck, the last and final trap. It's one of my best spicy tech cards of the game, Skill Drain. One of the best traps in the game, because it negates all monster effects. Because, you know, most, when I went up against the Spiral matchups at my locals, I won, basically, every single match that came up first. Because, mainly because of this card, it helped me win, and I was able to draw into it. Because, you know, if... Because, you know, when I played Circle, I stack it, then I play Lord Darkness, then I end up drawing it... I mean, like, this deck is insane elite because of skill drain, because, you know, it really doesn't affect the effect monsters that much at all. Because, you know, you can use Apprentice Illusion Magician from your hand to still boost your monster's attack power. So, really, you're still good. So, it really doesn't affect the deck at all. But it can affect my opponent's decks. Okay. So, let's get to the action deck. First up, Double Dark Magician the Dragon Knight. He's the, like, the main best, one of the other best boss monsters of the deck. Because, you know, this card's name becomes Dark Magician while it's in the field or in the GY, so that means we summon it, circle becomes live, and since that it becomes Dark Magician, Eternal Soul protects it, and it protects your back row from card effects that can't be destroyed by your opponent's card effects, so that means he can't pop Eternal Soul, so meaning he can't do jack shit. You're, when you get this out, you're basically going to win, but most of the time I actually end up winning sometimes without Dark Magician the Dragon Knight. Next up, the other card I mentioned, Dark Paladin. He is the card I put in here to mainly when I go up against dragon decks. 
I put him in here for dragon decks mainly, but I still think he's a good classic card to use because he gains 500 attack points for every dragon monster that's in the field or in the graveyard. And he can negate spell cards. And you know, in Spiral, are spell heavy card decks. That's another reason why I put Dark Paladin in here, to negate the effects of the Spiral spells. So that means when he activates the effect of Sleeper, put him in Spell Trap Zone, just discard, negate. And any spell card I try to play, I just kept on discarding to negate. And when I discard Dark Magician, I'm able to bring him back with Eternal Soul. Next up, Double Ebon Illusion Magician. He's the card do you want to go into when you summon um, Dark Magician and Magician Dark Illusion. Or two level 7 Dark Magicians, because of course two level 7 monsters. First effect, you can just attach a material, summon a normal spellcaster type monster from your deck. And when a normal spellcaster type monster clears an attack, you can use its effect to banish a card in the field. So it's like the effect of circle. You can only use its effect once per turn. Well, both effects, really. I think. Yeah. You, will, you wouldn't go into him that much, but the card you would really want to go into... I only have one Red Ice Flare Metal Dragon. Um, you want to go into him because you know he can't be destroyed by card effects. And if your opponent popped Eternal Soul, then he would be still be on the field and you would have that card to deal with. And if your opponent would say, because you see, I also went up against a Trickstar deck. And when he popped my Eternal Soul, it didn't matter because I had him on the field. And he used so many card effects. Like, he just kept on doing it, but he kept on losing life points. Like... He was being so stupid, but when I against in game two, he was trying to be smart, right? But he still couldn't do it. Like, he was trying to use so many card effects, like, it still didn't matter. Next up, the only two Link monsters, uh, Double Link Spider. You tribute Dark Magician in order to summon Link Spider, like, only Dark Magician, not Magician, Dark Illusion. Because now it requires one normal monster. I only bring him out when I want to summon the extra that monster to main monster zone. And that's about it. Now let's go off to the side deck. Uh, side deck, double anti-spell fragrance, which I use for the Pendulum Magician matchup, and any Pendulum deck in general. Like, I even hope it gets a Magic Spectre, and it was, I mean, like, seriously, I thought I was going to lose to that, but I actually ended up beating it. This guy was like, he was acting like he didn't even know how to play Magic Spectres. That was kind of like, what the fuck? Those were the words that crossed my mind. So yeah, and the last card I mentioned in my side deck, which is right here, the third D barrier. Like I said, it was on the budget, and you see it's a common. I got the Cyrus Link structure deck, which made me so happy that I finally got to get D barrier and play it. Oh man, it helped me win so many games. So many games. So yeah, that was it for my Dark Magician deck profile. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure to leave a like in the comment section and make sure to subscribe to my channel and oh as Casey you notice I also use my My Little Pony Ultra Pro Prey Mat and I'm also a brony uh, so that's entitled for my channel but I love My Little Pony just as much as Yu-Gi-Oh but still make sure to leave a like comment and subscribe and I'll make sure to leave some famous Yu-Gi-Oh tubers in the comment section for you to look over and I suggest you check them out I'll make sure to spell them out correctly. If I don't, I'm sure they'll come up in the search better. So thanks for watching, and I hope you'll enjoy my content, and I'll post another video again soon.